Uh, young Christoph, you just played a draw with uh, Fidet. It was a very sharp game, and looking at the uh, time management, it looked like a very impressive uh, opening preparation from your side. Yeah, indeed. Uh, I mean, more of the game was my preparation, but um, yeah, I mean, many uh, semi tarot lines. I mean, the preparation goes to, I mean, 25 or even 30 moves sometimes. So. Um, yeah, actually, uh, I surprised my opponent uh, with this line. Also, kind of um, could couldn't recall like all the details. Um, yeah, and after knight d3, queen d6, actually, uh, my knowledge ended. Um, after that, knight c5 was. I mean, I'm not sure if uh, <laughs> it was the best or not, but um, it was very practical, I guess, for white, because in this um, in this end game, I mean, with rooks and queens after rook takes c5. Okay, I was maybe pressing a bit, but um, white should be active enough, I guess, to hold the draw. And um, yeah, but um, I think I played decently, but uh, also played this before, kind of stupid move. I mean, I, I thought it was like the only uh, the only move to have a game, but I mean, it was some absurd actually. And I could have just taken c6, I think, and there was some ruined game, maybe drawn, but. Um, I mean, there were some pass pawns, you know, some some races and so on. So it was anyone's game, I think. But I was ahead of one hour in the on the clock, so <laughs> that uh, yeah would have made more sense, I guess. Um, you're at fifty percent in the tournament after six rounds. Um, are you are you happy or satisfied with the results uh, so far? Um, no, <laughs> I'm hardly happy. Um, I actually, um, I mean, I spoiled, of course, uh, my game against Majorov. Uh, which I could have probably should have won, but um, <laughs> instead I, I mean, I did Harakiri, and and that's why I'm on zero actually uh, score, not plus two or plus one even. So um, yesterday was also a very crazy game against Kriakin, but uh, most of the time I was uh, worse or or lost. So mm, okay, draw in the end wasn't um, wasn't that bad, I guess. Yeah, still there are many rounds to play, so uh, anything can happen, basically. Yeah, because um, yeah, like yesterday when I checked your game with Karyakin in the final position, you're plus two somehow. Like, can you yeah, explain what, what, what's, what's, what's going on? <laughs> I, mean, I, mean, I mean, yeah, we both assess position correctly uh, to, be, to be a draw after some repetition. And he played 96-97, which was one way of uh, repeating the position. But then he wanted to be fancy and play rook g4, which felt very natural. Um, for me as well, and yeah, and it was, I mean, the move contained a hole, and uh, I was just winning after rook f1, but I just spotted, you know, earlier that uh, after bishop e3, it's also repetition, so I even didn't look, you know, for something better, because I was also insane not. So, um, yeah, that was very annoying, of course, uh, to see that, I mean, rook f1 wasn't, like, the most difficult uh, move in the world, so um, it was pretty annoying, also. Also, the fact that he, you know, repeated this twice. <laughs> I mean, played rook g7, could have played rook g8 with uh, three hole repetition after bishop h6, but played rook g7, and I could have still win by means of rook f1 the second time, but I just didn't see it. Does this position come through your mind at, at night when you're when you're in bed and just thinking like, oh shit, like rook f1? Uh, no, I mean, of course it's annoying, but also I think Sergei clearly misplayed his position earlier on. I was in bad shape, also, uh, also, also taking into consideration time. So, um, no, I think it's um, okay. I just wanted to freestyle, you know, and <laughs> the opening because I was. Uh, I mean, couldn't have been the opening. Couldn't have been like uh, forcing, like guessed, I guess. So, um, yeah, I just used uh, burn a lot of time and then also misplayed uh, my very fancy idea I came up with over the board and um, yeah but I mean I mean when you are out of form or maybe not playing perfectly then I mean sometimes uh, such things happen so um, okay. overall I think it's like kind of fair enough uh, fair result. Mm -hmm. um, last month you played the uh, road trap in Blitz in your home country uh, yeah. you finished second in the Blitz um, how is chess in Poland or the popularity of chess in Poland and uh, and what happened the days after uh, the championships? Yeah, the popularity is uh, clearly growing, but also I think it's a worldwide phenomenon, not strictly in Poland. Um, partially thanks to uh, Netflix series Queen's Gambit, which is extremely popular, or used to be extremely popular in Poland. Um, partially due to my results. Also, uh, when, I mean, there were no, I mean, there was COVID, yeah, and uh, there weren't like many 
uh, many successes in other disciplines then I mean I happened to know to break uh, Magnus Carlsen world record of not losing games and so on and it was very like popular um, also in even mainstream Polish me media so yeah chess is clearly uh, getting more and more popular and also we had this world rapid yeah, and this uh, championship was kind of um, extraordinary to be honest like no one expected it ever to happen so it was of course very cool and um yeah and i played very well i think rapid but didn't deliver in the last round against Dusatorov, who uh played i mean for the for the first um place i mean if i had one i would be on his spot i guess playing against Nepomniachtchi. but and but i played i mean quite quite decently uh, in rapid and played terribly in blitz, but somehow, you know, won <laughs> won too many games. And <laughs> I mean, I mean, had um, yeah, was winning, you know, a bunch of games in a row, which was crucial on the second day. And somehow, you know, happened to share also. Um, I mean, this time to share, yeah, first and second, and but lost uh, to MVL. So. Um, yeah, it was crazy, uh, crazy, <laughs> and then crazy days. Like and but also, I mean, you know, it's it somehow felt like I wasn't playing in, in Poland. I mean, it was so different, you know, because I'm usually, I mean, I've played uh, World Rapid and Blitz, you know, several times in many countries, many continents, you know, and somehow it's I didn't feel, you know, particularly that I'm like in Poland. But there were many fans, like uh, perhaps too many. <laughs> because, and and uh, you were voted like the third best sportsman in Poland. Is that correct? Uh, or like there was like this, this sports um, gala with? Oh, no, no, no. I wasn't in top fifteen. I mean, I wasn't ah. uh, qualified to this. But uh, okay, <laughs> okay. <sorry. laughs> yeah. <laughs> but um, but, but no, you're getting no. more famous now in in Poland, I assume. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now it was Olympics year, and you know it's highly important, I guess, in sports <laughs> in general. So. So uh, we have many, um, many good athletes. I mean, many, many medals on Olympics. So um, yeah, I mean, but I just want you know to to popularize chess in Poland and not strictly be like you know in mainstream media because I don't particularly enjoy it. Okay, thank you so much. Thanks.